covert narcissists are kind of difficult to spot for some people and slip their way into your life. You can be around them for a long period of time before you figure out what you're looking at is narcissism. It can be completely tricky and difficult to see that what is happening is manipulation because everything they do, well, most of the things they do that are toxic tend to be covertly done or hidden or not so obvious, not so overt. Covert narcissists present themselves as vulnerable people, people who have lower self-esteem or appear to, they appear to be more humble, they can be more introverted, they can look anxious or depressed or victim-like. As empathic people, what happens is that we meet with these people and feel empathy for their situation. We feel like they've had a hard life or that things have been difficult or whatever. And we empathize with the, the victim that they present themselves as and we try to help them. Or we understand and we commiserate with the way they're feeling or they express that they're feeling. But the thing is, if they have narcissism, they are still lacking the empathy that it takes to be in a healthy relationship or to even be nice in a relationship. They're lacking the accountability that it takes to make any change for their life because of the narcissism. Self-abasing, putting self down. They may talk as if they're less than people, whereas an overt narcissist, you know they're in the room because they are full of self-confidence, full of self-pride, full of ego. They're easier to spot. A covert narcissist can be charming in a different way. They can be humorous. They can use a lot of self-abasing um, humor, self, you know, like make themselves the joke or when what you find out later is they then make you the joke. Another sign of covert narcissism that is more subtle is the changing of plans unexpectedly, this changing of scheduling unexpectedly, the setting you up and knocking it down when it comes to your scheduling, your timing, um, your, their availability to you. And it can just turn at the, you know, one second and you don't know what happened. Like, well, why can't you show up? Another trait of covert narcissism that is more subtle. It's subtle if you don't know. Once you know, it's so obvious. Acting innocent. They act innocent in an argument. They act innocent when they've done something wrong. They give you this look and maybe even the expression of like, who me? What, what did I do? What, I did something? It's, it's innocent or innocent and offended. Why would you even blame me? Why would you, what? You know, and it's, and it can be over the stupidest, smallest, most, the, uh, Benign things that are so easy to take accountability for in most people. And so you see it over and over and over where they blame others when they're accused of something or asked about something or whatever, they'll start shifting the blame and pointing the finger back at others. It's never them, right? So, okay, another trait, passive aggressive behavior. Overt narcissists have this less, okay? Covert narcissists use passive aggressive means to show their disapproval, to punish you. Basically, they will do things like snide under the breath remarks at you, snide comments, snide remarks. Um, they're manipulating to get their way by pulling on your empathy or the empathy of others. So if, if they don't like something or if they want something, instead of just asking for it, it's more like asking for it. But I mean, if you want, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't I guess I don't deserve that. That kind of underdog, victim-y stance. So that's what I was going to say about acting innocent. Acting innocent as a victim. Why is everyone always looking at me like I'm the problem? Sabotaging. They'll sabotage situations in a way that is sort of um, suddenly just shifting everything and making everything go from just fine to bad. And then the whole night is ruined. Because they will sabotage the rest of the night or day. And so you walk on eggshells and you don't say anything. Um, they will give you the silent treatment. The covert will let you know they're being silent. And they will let you know in a very disapproving way that it's because of you. 
and they will turn in often into the shell of themselves while they sit there silently pouting and sinking back and sulking away from the situation so they don't have to deal with being accountable to anything. They'll avoid situations that they feel are beneath them by just not doing it. And then playing innocent or dumb or why well, didn't know, right? Okay. All right, so let's talk about a subtle sign of empathy. Displays of empathy. People often get confused here. They see empathy, and this is where it stops them. They have every single, like, I'll read a list of, I don't know, 50 signs of covert narcissism, and they will say, I bet, you know, my partner checks off, or my husband, my wife, whatever, they check off every single one of these 50, except for the empathy. It's like I see empathy. I don't get it. So if they have all these other things, can they be a narcissist? I say, I don't know. I can't diagnose them. But what I can say is if they're checking more than five of those, they may be pretty toxic, right? And is toxic enough to get you to see that that is not good for your life? Is it that's up to you, right? And okay, so how does a covert narcissist seem to have empathy? Oftentimes, they are altruistic and they are do-gooders in the world where they go out and they help people. They go out and help situations. They go out and do nice things for people. Do nice. But when you look at it, it is always so that there is a reflection coming back to themselves so that it represents the thing they're doing represents the mask they're wearing that they want the world to believe they are, that they themselves probably in their delusional minds believe they are. That is not a full spectrum of empathy. That is them understanding a situation cognitively and knowing how to respond to it and doing the response. They don't actually care. That's the difference. The difference is that they will only show empathy and will only do those acts when it is in situations that then reflect back to them or gets them grat gratification or gets them praise. They manipulate you through using guilt and blame and shame. Not, don't need to say a whole lot there. If you've experienced that, you know what I mean. They will use, again, subtle subtle phrases, passive-aggressive behavior, or they will just flat out tell you, you're doing this because you're trying to blah, blah, blah to me. You're, they will shame, shame, shame. Guilt, guilt, guilt. You're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And they're hypersensitive to criticism, to critiquing, to being told they're wrong, to being told that they're doing something that hurts other people. They're super hypersensitive to anything and they are not easily coached through that. They are not easily talked to. You So if you've ever been around a covert narcissist and you've tried to explain to them, even in the kindest, most gentle way, what they have done to hurt someone else or to hurt you or, or what their part is in an in an argument or a debate or whatever, right? Just what their part is, not even a criticism, just simply, hey, I think your part was this and my part was that. They will come unglued. They're going to blame shift. They're going to, if they do say, oh, you're right, I did do that, boom, they'll do that thing right again. So they'll dismiss it. Some of them are very uh, conflict avoidant. And so they will just dismiss it all. Hmm, okay. And then they'll just keep doing the thing, right? And others will turn it on you, the more malicious ones, <laughs> will turn it around and make you the one who's wrong. And now you're not only wrong for the thing that you did, you're wrong for the thing that they did, and you're wrong for pointing it out. They're very hypersensitive to being seen, to see being seen behind the mask. They want that mask in place. And their mask is one that fits in with everybody, with most people. They blend in. That's their mask. And that's why they're slippery and dangerous. Judgmental observations. They will make facial expressions. They will make, they will have like short phrases to show they're disapproving of something. They will judge your friends, judge your family, judge you. Judge the dog, judge the color of the house, judge everything. Judge other people. They will sit with 
And it's not in the same way that an overt narcissist might do it where they're like, look at them, you know, that it's subtle under undertoned digs at other people. They'll judge you in ways where you start to feel smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until you feel like you can get nothing right. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.